Hey guys, Stealth here. Let's have a look at the USSR deck that was sent in by John Mason. He wants to do a USSR deck that engage head-on with the enemy. So what we're going to do is build this deck as aggressively as possible. Now the first thing that I noticed when I had a look at this deck is that he only spent 56 out of 60 activation points, which is a bit unusual. But okay, let's see what we can work with. The mission for this deck is a 4v4 maximum. Um, that means we will not have to keep in mind that we have to counter an entire flank like you do in a 10v10. And it should be able to deal with pretty much any situation. And that is something that the uh, USSR deck does very well because it's very, very versatile. It has a lot of great units and definitely mobile units that we can pick from. So let's see how mobile and aggressive we can make this deck. Now, the first thing is logistics as always. Something that is missing here is either a second command unit or a logistics unit. So that's definitely something I'm going to fill up. Um, I'm going to go with the MI6 because we get three of those at 3700. You can go with the MI26 but you get less of them. They are extremely easy to spot, even easier to shoot down. And on the ground they're just one big explosion waiting to happen. So I prefer the MI6 because it's uh, well. It, these things can still go up very, very fast. And by that I mean in a big explosion they are a little bit less easy to shoot down because they are, or actually they're, no they're just as big so it doesn't really matter. But losing one of these you lose 3700 units of supplies and one out of three units and this is one out of two. Also I'm going to throw out this command unit because I want something that can take a bit more punches and still have a better availability. So I'm going to go with either the BRDM2U with a BTR-70K. Let's see, that's just about the only transports. Yeah, maybe one of these. I want something that has a bit of armor all round. I don't really need a gun, so armor is most important here. This one has two. And this one has one. So I'm going to go with the BTR-70K because it has two frontal armor. I won't exactly be using that heavy machine gun, but it's a nice to have. Gives me four command units, it's not a lot, but we're going to have to roll with it. And the other logistics unit that he has in here is the 4320. Not a great logistics unit, but it's um, the only decent truck that the USSR get. So, infantry wise, I want this situation or this section of the deck to be aggressive. I want them to be fast and I want them to um, not be geared towards holding a terrain. So Concourse M are not really an offensive unit. They are more of a defensive town holding force. And um, considering that this deck is only meant to be on the move, always attacking, these ones are not going to go with us. VDVs and BMP or BMD 1Ps are nice units. Um, for aggressive and considering they're only five points more expensive, I'm going to go with the BMD-3. Because they got the Concourse M, they got a better main gun. They got the 2A42 with 25% accuracy versus 20 on the BMP or the BMD-1P. Although this one has the Grom with 12 armor penetration, and this one is only an autocannon with 2 armor penetration. Still, I want to have a couple of these in. Nine of those. These things are gone. Uh, because I also want to get some more transports that the regular infantry can get us in the form of the BMP-1D which also has the Grom and it has a grenade launcher so for fast anti-infantry operations we can use the BMP-1D offload the Modus Trelki and use the Modus Trelki and the VDVs to clear out a town and talking about clearing out a town you want to have Spatsnaz in there as well um, since all of these are motorized BMPs and uh, BMDs, I'm also going to motorize these. And that's also going to cut off a lot of the price of these things because you're paying 45 points for a well, pretty meh helicopter. It's not that good. So we could go for the Skrajet or the Robot. Um, I want something that's fast and that's something that these things are both. BTRD is also a pretty decent unit. Um, when I see this unit, by the way, I'm always wondering how the fuck do you squeeze 10 Spetsnaz guys with their full equipment into a thing like this? I mean, are they lying in coffins or something? Anyway, um, this thing is only a 5-pointer, 
and that means that for um, only 40 points you can get some Spatsnaz. But we also have some more interesting transports like the BTR-90. And these are the ones that I'm going to be using. Reason for that is while they are still pretty expensive, you're still going to be paying 25 points for them. They do have um, a grenade launcher, a very, very high off-road speed, some armor, two on the front and two on the side, and they got that auto cannon, which has a good rate of fire and very good accuracy. So definitely going to be using these, and we're going to take seven of those. Then, anti-airwise, he has Igla Ns. Um, Igla Ns, I suppose you could say they are not that aggressive, but you do need them in your infantry section. What I am going to be doing here, though, is taking them in a different transport. And I think that the Scrajet, since it also packs an AA gun and is pretty fast, is the best option. So let's go with seven of those. Support-wise, it has to be fast, it has to be mobile, and it has to be able to defend the rest of the forces. Um, having two artillery units in there is not that likely or that logical. So the Malka is something that I'm going to delete, because the Smirch is going to clear out or at least weaken a force that's holding an enemy territory before, for example, the tanks and the transports roll in. The Malka, while it's a great sniper unit, is not something that we really need in this deck. What we do need is a fast mortar unit like the Nona. So I'm going to bring seven Nonas in this deck. And then I need some more AA because all we have now is one card of Tungushkas and that is not exactly enough. So I need a fast missile defense. Um, Buck M1s are pretty fast at 50. It's, well, it's pretty average, really. The Osas are fast, though. They don't carry a lot of missiles, but they have a good range of 3500, and they are operating at 80 kph. So I'm going to take seven of these. They already have a base accuracy of 50%, which is enough to hit a couple of aircraft, as long as you keep these in groups of two. The Tor would be another option. It has a bit of both. It has a good range against helicopters and airplanes. Good accuracy. It's not as fast though. Um, the Buck and ones and the Stralis. The Stralis don't have any long range anti-airplane range. And that is something that I am looking for. So, tank wise. And the first thing that is going to get victimized of my T-62 hate is the T-62 OBR 1975. These things are out because they have a terrible rate of fire. Goodbye. Next up, T-64 BVs. These things I will definitely be keeping in here. Because they're nice and fast, got a good mix of armor and armor penetration. They got the Agona, which can be fired on the move, although you get a bit more accuracy out of it if it's standing still. These are going to be nice workhorses. Um, 130 points is a bit high for a workhorse tank. So for workhorse tank, we're also going to have to look towards, for example, the T-72 line. Maybe the T-72B1. You get 18 armor penetration, you get 15 frontal armor. Um, let's go with 7 of these. And here's a couple of T-80s in here, which don't exactly have as high accuracy or as high frontal armor as the T-72s. Um, they are fast though, 70 and 70. Actually, let's rethink this. <coughs> Something that's fast and mobile, BMP-685. 18 of those. These are going to be our cheap light tanks. Then we need something of a medium tank. So a T-72A would do that job. 14 armor penetration, 13 frontal armor, 60 kph, fast and aggressive enough to do that job. 13 of those. Um, I need something in the yeah, 100, say 100 to 130 point vision. So that could be the T-64BV, although it is pretty damn expensive, and you only get four. Um, let's see, I'm considering the BV, because you do get more of those. Let's see. T-64 versus T-80. 17 frontal armor, a little bit more on the side for the T-80. T-80 is a bit faster, has a bit less autonomy. Armor penetration-wise, the T-64BV wins. Um, on both weapons, both on the main gun and the Cobra. So the T-80BV is really only uh, interesting in the sense that it's slightly faster and it has a bit more armor on the side. But otherwise, we do get more of them. And that is something that is interesting. We can get four or seven 
versus only four of these T-64 BVs. We already got 37 tanks, so that should be enough. Um, and I'm going to switch out the T-80UM for the T-72BU. The reason for that is because I really like the frontal armor on the T-72BU. The T-80UM has some very, very nice weapons, the Ingvar and the TA-46M with good armor penetration and accuracy, but it can just not really hold its own if it's going to have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a Kiyomarushiki, a Leclerc, 2A5s, um, the new strv 121s so stuff like that is not something that the T-80U excels at. This thing is more capable of bullying over a medium tank, say 150 points max. So I'm going to go with the T-72BU because of its armor. So two of these cards in, and that gives us 37 tanks, should be enough. Recce, again, fast, mobile, no stopping. Spetsnaz VMF are going to be the first to arrive. I want these to be my sniper team to make sure I can spot whatever is going to be coming in from, for example, the enemy spawn so I can respond to it. Um, so these things in an MI-24D, while they are not very aggressive units, they do fit the profile. So let's go with a couple of those. Then he has three KA-52s, very, very nice helicopters, not only because of their form factor, but also because they carry both AA missiles and SEED missiles. They're, I believe, the only helicopter in the game that carries SEED missiles, and these things can be extremely annoying if you're facing off against them, because their anti-ground range is bigger or greater than any of the radar-guided platforms can fire at. And keeping that in mind, um, this thing is definitely a must-have, because it's also very fast, has exceptional optics, and even medium stealth. T-55s are recon tanks that I frequently use. They're cheap, they got medium, or sorry, good optics, uh, medium size, they're not as easy to lock onto. Medium stealth, so that's all good. And then a PD-85, which has very good optics, although it's not as fast. It's not going to be able to keep up with, for example, the front line. So I'm going to throw this one out and see what options we have, vehicle-wise. <coughs> we can go with the Plamia. Plamia doesn't have any armor, but it is very fast, and it has exceptional optics, which is nice to have. But I think that the KA-52 can more or less fulfill that role already. BRDM-3s are also very nice transports or um, reconnaissance units because they're fast. They don't have a lot of armor, only two but they are pretty cheap, 35 points. I would like something that's cheap and very mobile, actually. And also preferably have good to very good optics. And I think that this one is going to fit the bill. This one has better optics than T-55. It has very good versus good. It lacks all weapons. It doesn't have anything to defend itself with, either weapon-wise or armor-wise. But it is a very good optics unit, and you can park these things on your flanks if you want to, so that the T-55s can do, um, or can go along with your push. One thing I'm also going to change here is to upvet these from 13 to 9, so we get them at hardened, which is going to aid them a little bit in their spotting and reconning, so 10% uh, chance, or plus 10% chance to see and identify, versus only 5%. Vehicle-wise, Again, the motto is fast and furious, so BMPTs are definitely a good use in this deck. 70 kph off-road, 15 frontal armor, that's more than most of the tanks that we have in this deck can provide. T-72s don't have that amount of armor. Uh, BMP-685s <laughs> have only 20% of the armor, and the T-64BVs are getting pretty damn close with 17 so this is a very, very capable frontline unit. Norovs are also pretty mobile at 60. Um, I think that the Jalo would be a bit better. And the reason for that is that it's faster at 70 kph and has a higher rate of fire. So instead of the Norovs, we're going to go with the Jalo. Then he has a couple, or more than a couple actually, he has 18 of these BTR-152s. I'm not sure why you'd want to have these in because they don't exactly um, fit any specific role. The only real role that I could think of for them is anti-infantry with that heavy machine, or medium machine gun, it's not even a heavy machine gun, it's a medium machine gun that they have on there. But these things are terribly outdated, they're going to get one shot by anything that even looks at them. 
so they're out. Um, Concours are left in. Let's see, they are nice and mobile units, but I don't think that an ATGM carrier is going to be that useful in this deck. And the reason for that is that these things, um, while they are fast to push up and fast to retreat, I don't think we really need this. Maybe another card of tanks would be better for the role that we have in mind for this deck. So this one's out. Let's see. Um, Afghanskis are not that fast, only 50. Napalm tanks. These things are terribly slow off-road. 45 and 50. So if you're going to go with a napalm tank, go with a TO-55 instead of the TO-62. And let's see. I think that's the only real interesting units that are in here. So let's go with nine more napalm tanks, and I believe that, yeah, I was afraid of that. We cannot get any more tanks at the moment. So we might have to go with a vehicle anyway. Um, let's see. Concourse Jeeps? Nah. Not really. Recall those rifle Jeeps? Same problem. They're going to get one shot before they get in range of that main gun, considering we're, almost, we're going to be always pushing up with this deck. So in that case, um, yeah, maybe a couple of these. But I'm going to upvat them as much as possible to know that that 23 armor penetration missile will hit. It only gives me four of these, but it should be enough. Helicopter-wise, um, it has to be fast, so the Mi-4 <laughs> AVs at 180 kph. I mean, these things are still faster than the ground transports and the tanks and stuff like that, but they are pretty terrible helicopters. The only thing that I would consider them for is those high amount of rocket pods, but they only do one HE damage. If you want to get rocket pods, go with the MI-4A. They don't have um, as many of them, they got 80 versus 96, but their caliber is bigger, which means more suppression, more HE power, and the accuracy is 5% more, but you do lose the Melyutka. Still, um, I don't think that we need to uh, spend two points on any of these terrible helicopters if we got these beauties to pick from. He went with two tank killers, which is too much. Um, one of these is enough. Having two of them is really only viable when you're dealing with a deck that is, for example, an airborne deck or something that is dedicated purely towards helicopters, which is something that a general deck does not really do that well. So we're going to either go with the MI-28s or the Akulas, and I'm going to go with the Akulas because I don't really need the uh, those 10, um, 120 millimeter rockets on the MI-28. I do want the fast missiles that are the Vickers are, and they got some IGLA, so they can also protect the ground forces versus air threats. <coughs> with that, let's throw in some more aircraft from the MI-24P. I'm going to use these as mobile rocket pod launchers or rocket pod vehicles in the sense that I want as many of them as possible. I don't really need to rely on that Kokon because um, for anti-tank operations we got the Akula. So it's really here to provide rocket pod fire. So seven of those. Um, and then if you want to have either a tank killer, go with the MI-24 VP. This thing is a very, very good all-round helicopter. It is one of the few helicopters in the game that carries armor, one front and one side. It has very good anti-tank weapons, the Kokon M. It has a nice amount of rocket pods and twin autocannons, which are going to do a ton of damage to infantry vehicles. Um, so really, it's yeah, it's tricky. I don't think I'm going to be needing the MI-24V that much, because I won't be doing an air rush. So let's go with the VP instead and get a couple of those. The air tab, again, it has to be capable of supporting a ground push. So the first thing that I want in here is a great air security fighter, and that is something that this thing definitely is. The SU-27PU, long-range anti-air fighter, um, great missiles on them. Both, both of the Vimples are good. High accuracy, fire and forgets on all of them. Of course, the short-range missiles usually have fire and forgets. The long-range missiles don't always have that. You only get that for the high-end air superiority fighters. Next up, something that can engage ground targets. Um, MiG-29M with a couple of cluster bombs is something that can really do that. It does carry four very high-end cluster bombs, which do six armor penetration, attacking the targets right from the top. 
which means that they're going to be doing a lot of damage to tanks. They will not one-shot tanks like some tank snipers would, but if you're dealing with a combination or a cluster of a couple of targets, these things will get the job done. Um, seed, I don't think is that important in this deck, so I'm going to throw those out. And since we already have a pretty good ASF in here, the SU-27PU, although it is only one card, I'm not going to go with the MiG-23 MLDs. I want some more ground attack stuff. I'm also going to take the other card of MiG-29S, or the MiG-29 card, I should say. The MiG-29S has ground bombs versus cluster bombs. So this thing is just HE damage, while still being mounted on a fighter platform, so you still get some AA missiles. You get some ECM, you get a nice turn radius, you get a good speed. So these are going to be our bombers. <coughs> And then we need a tank sniper. Tank snipers are not only found in the anti-tank tab, they are also found in the multi-role tab. Keep that in mind. Because some of these things, like for example the SU-25T, these cla are classed as multi-roles. I would class them as a ground attack aircraft that happens to be mounting a couple of AA missiles, but um, the game has classed it as a ground attack, or as a multi-role aircraft. It is however not the one that I'll be using, because I want to have something that can fly in, snipe one high-end tank, and get out. The MiG-27K can do that with 50% accuracy and 30 armor penetration. Or, if you have a bit more budget, you could go with the SU-27M. And that one has more range on its missiles. They are all fire and forget, all four of them. Have the same armor penetration. The ECM on the SU-27 versus the MiG-27 is better is uh, 50 versus 30. Air detection is very good and you also get a couple of long-range Vimple missiles on the SU-27M that you don't get on the MiG-29 or MiG-27K. I am however not that likely to use these because I'm going to snipe one tank, maybe two, so I won't really be needing four missiles. Two missiles should do the job. <coughs> they have a good base accuracy. If you're using them in a tactical game, up at them the veteran because that's going to give you a lot more accuracy. For me, it's a general deck, so I'm just going to use two of them at Rookie. Now let's see, Naval Tab. Um, he went with a very strange combination of units, and I'm not going to use any of these. The Ludas are pretty terrible at taking down anti-ship missiles. They only have medium COS, they got no defensive missiles. Same for the Najin. They also got medium sea whiz, no defensive missiles, so both of these ships are out. <coughs> and again, to stress, if you're using a deck that only has five naval slots, either go all the way naval, so all marines, uh, sorry, I mean all ships, or go all anti-ships, so all aircraft. For me, that has worked best, because then you have a force that has a bit of a critical mass, if you will a critical mass of having enough sea whiz or enough missiles to punch through enemy missile defenses. So what I'm going to do here is go with anti or with um, a marine group because um, since this deck is called head-on John Mason wants this thing to attack and that is something that Jang Yus do very well. So let's go with two groups of three Jang Yus. Um, I want something that can engage ground targets this one has a dual naval gun versus, uh, where is it, the Udaloy. Udaloy not found. Okay, this is taking too long. Ships. Command ships. Silver many versus Udaloy. Um, the Udaloy also has two main guns, but I believe that the Silver many has them in two turrets, and that's not something that's registered here. But you can see that the Udaloy only has a turret on the front of the ship, here on the bow. Sovremeni has one turret on the bow and a second turret on the stern. So for anti-ship and ground support, this ship is better. So that's why I'm going to use the Sovremeni. I also want to have a uh, Muna in here to resupply any ships that run out of ammo. And possibly some um, coastal support ships if I want to support sh um, some infantry or attack forces closer to the shore. Let's see. Um, and we could go with some of these rocket boats, if you want to call them that. I call them that because they got these uh, MLRS, 
both the Chongju and the Schmelz have those. I don't really use them that often, but some people really spam these things. Not the best options here. Uh, escort ships. Since all of these ships are very good at dealing with anti-ship missiles, they all have very good um, seawiz and possibly some of them, like the Jangyu, got the HQ-7 defensive missile and they got the main gun for defense. Same for the Sovremeni, it also has the main gun for defense and the Stil-1 for missile defense. So we don't really need to get another missile defender in here. But something that can operate close to the shore, which has a coaster class sailing, would be a nice addition here. Um, let's see, these are all geared towards anti-ship warfare. Except for the Shanghai, but they can barely shoot anything bigger than an infantry unit. Tarantulas, uh, pretty much the same problem. Um, I'm considering going with either another command ship or another card of Munas. And now two cards of Munas might be too much for these ships, but I found that if you use them quite intensely, they will start to run out of ammo. And that is something that is going to be a significant problem, especially once those HQ-7s run out or the main gun on the Sovereign Mini runs out. Because that's going to well, it's not invalidate your ship, but it's going to really hurt your forces. So we can either go with an Udaloy, um, a Najin is a great support ship for anti-ground operations. And it has some nice dual type 66 naval guns, which can do anti-helicopter and anti-airplane warfare. Luda. Um, is even better. You do pay a bit more for it, but its ground range is better, 4,900 meters. Its air range is also better, 2,800 meters. So let's go with a couple of these. And that is um, <coughs> what I would call a super aggressive USSR deck. You can see that none of the units in this deck, or at least very, very few of them, are geared towards defending. So if you want to use this deck, the deck code is in the description down below. And have, uh, if you have a great replay with this deck, please mention it and send it in. Because I'm always looking for great replays. So if you want to use it, as I mentioned, in the description down below. Um, I'm also going to reiterate that the deck codes for any deck that was created prior to February 1st, 2015... Um, that deck code will no longer work, because that's when uh, DLC 3 was released... And that somehow invalidated all the deck codes before it. So if you want to use any of those decks, you're going to have to rebuild them. Because I simply don't have the time to go over, I don't know, 80, 70 to 80 deck reviews and go all of those deck codes again. So if you want to use them, rebuild them yourself. And this one, luckily, doesn't have that problem. You can just use the deck code for this one. So, thanks for watching. Hope you liked it. If you did... Um, let me know by hitting that like button. If you have any suggestions for other offensive units that I overlooked, please let me know in the comments down below. And otherwise, I'll be seeing you in the next video.